Alrighty, so so I guess I somewhat said the intro like I kind of had just gone through life like you know graduating high school going to college moving into my own place and I was like on my own for quite a long time like almost 10 years holy and you know I had like relationships and stuff here and there but nothing like really um nothing serious ever I haven't really ever been in like a really serious relationship I had one and he cheated on me and I think the last time that I <laughs> looked him up like years ago he was like possibly oh never mind I'm not gonna I don't want just in case he <laughs> sees this but it's like he I'll just quickly say I think he married a doctor so <laughs> Going from me to a doctor, I'm like, wow, I am such a catch. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if that's actually true or not. I just remember, like, I haven't looked in a long time, but <sighs> I'm like, wow, from a doc, from me to a doctor, like, <laughs> am I on the um the class of a doctor no <laughs> but I just thought that's kind of funny um but um anyway so I was on my own and then I kind of just made this decision like I had one really good tax return this year and I just it was like 2015 and so I uh, just decided I'm going to move to BC. Like, I'm finally going to do it. I just need to get out of Winnipeg. There's just too much trauma, too many memories. Too... I just need to start over again. So um, I found a place, and I think it was only like $750 or something crazy like that in a house. So everyone had their own room or their own suite. But, you know, that place now is probably listed for like uh who knows, like somewhere in the thousands and um and that was only like eight years ago. Like but like my very first apartment was only like four hundred dollars. <laughs> I should have never left, but I think it turned into condos like a year or two after I moved out. So it was for the best because, you know, being forced to find something is kind of devastating. So, but yeah, my, how uh, things can change in 10 years, like from $400, $700 rent to good luck like those units are like anywhere from like I don't know 1200 to 2000 a month now but um yeah so I just decided I was gonna move and I packed up I sold everything and I had a car full of things my mom drove me there <laughs> and oh the drive was just so amazing like driving through Saskatchewan Alberta and BC like for the very first time the last time I went or I went I had like one little trip in the winter before I moved actually and then I kind of just decided okay I have to move out here that's really what did it I always had it in mind but then when and my two aunts were living in Victoria and my grandma so it kind of just seemed like well at least if I go there then at least I'd have someone if anything happened. So 
I uh, packed up my car with my three cats <laughs> and just enough of what I needed and and when I got there it was like it just felt like a new beginning you know like just living in such a beautiful place with a better climate and then leaving everything behind like bad really you know just like even running into someone time to time like whether it be at a social event or at the grocery store like just seeing someone where it's like bad memories or unresolved or no closure or or someone who's bullied me or it just felt like I couldn't go anywhere like it felt so nice to get to Victoria and just feel like invisible like it didn't matter what I just yeah it really is a sense of freedom and I'm sorry that not everyone gets the chance to do that in life when they really feel like they should or would like to it's just it is financially like impossible sometimes but yeah so um and I had a job lined up when I got there because I my aunt worked at the place that I got a job but I still had to do an interview like and um and the job itself was like a charity that I had mentioned before. I didn't really say which one and I'm not going to because if I mention any details about it, it's kind of like going to be a dead giveaway. But, um, you know, things just went downhill fast. Like it was so very black and white. Like there was just so, so many great moments like being by the sea and there were a lot of free events in downtown Victoria and I made a friend right away and then we were going out from time to time but with my mental health like I didn't expect that I guess I just felt very alone and I started to isolate myself even more but it kind of all started having this breakdown this time was about like having my true, this is like a true breakdown. Like I've had moments in my life where I just, you know, was upset or whatever, but not, I always had to pick myself back up and just get back to work. And this time it was like, there was no quick recovery. And I'll explain in more detail about that, but Ugh. um, it started with like working at this job where it's like, it's supposed to be a charity that's like, we're doing good work and helping people. And the energy of what was going on there was just horrible. Like there were some really nice people there, but there was just like this drama, like this, like, like there was a lady who was like kind of training me was like really horrible to me and she just seemed to thrive on like looking for problems and picking people apart and and I just <laughs> thankfully I was doing really well where I was able to get my own like office because <laughs> I had to share a room and with this person who was like pretty horrible to me and thankfully like I quickly got my own office like it would not have been able to last without that but um another really awesome moment that happened there is um I know it it it's complete luck like but I feel a little bit like maybe I had something to do with it but um I got like a thousand dollar donation from someone I talked to and it was just awesome like it doesn't happen ever, like very many at all from what I heard in the office. So, and then, you know, afterwards people would say things like, well, we'll see if it actually comes in because nothing's official until they send it in and whatever, like just really ugliness like that. Like, n like we're saying, yeah, like the comments, like saying, oh, it could happen 
it's not about you, it's about them. That is true, but when I was speaking to the person, I made like a connection, like he, when I was getting his info, I hadn't even asked what he'd like to donate yet. I was just getting his info about his address to where to send the, send it in. And, and then I was like, oh, I love that street. I, I walk down it every single day on my way to work <laughs> and back and, and mentioned a, like a feature of the street and, um, and then so when he said he wanted to donate a thousand, I just felt like, wow, that's so awesome. And whether it had anything to do with me or not, it still just felt like a good feeling. And then people quickly tried to stomp on it. <laughs> and, um, and, and it was split shifts. It was really hard. Like, um. And it, so, you know, and then getting rejected on the phone a lot too was hard, like kind of forcing yourself to have to maintain like a really positive outlook or when people are sometimes not so nice, which, you know, you are bothering people and calling their phone when they didn't ask for it. I understand all that, but it's still just hard when to maintain like like oh not a big deal and move on because I had a telemarketing job before this one and it was really oof oh terrible but um so it's kind of like all these factors started to and then another thing um I was walking to and from work and it's like a half an hour walk there but I was like speed walking like if I went like just did a normal leisure pl pace it might have taken like 45 minutes to an hour but I was like freaking speed walking the full way for half an hour there and back and um and this was I don't know if this was before or after I think um like part of being in denial about my childhood, I was also very much in denial about my fibromyalgia because I had kind of just had these tests done. And then, like I said, when they're just like fibromyalgia and sent me on my way, I kind of just didn't really think much about it. I didn't do a lot of research. I didn't, um, I just, I'm like, okay, I just live with pain and that's the way it is. So, this is the first time I ever noticed something was really, really wrong is that, um, cause you know, before I had serving jobs and stuff and I was in pain and at the end of the day, I felt like I didn't really want to do anything. And I would say no a lot to wanting to do things. And I wasn't getting out there. I wasn't really like dating. I was by the end of the day, it's just like, I just do not have any energy for anything, but when I got out to BC and I was doing that walk every day, it got even worse. Like you'd think that after like a month or two of doing that walk that you'd like your body would adjust, but no, it's like, I was just in so much pain. And so eventually I got, um, a bus pass for a little bit and it made like such a world of a difference. Like, it's just like my body could never recover no matter how much time I gave it. Or by the time the weekend came, I was just in so much pain. I didn't really want to do anything. And then, um, and that's another thing with like alcohol. I kind of said that I used it to cope in like social situations. But I think I remember now also that um, I definitely abused it too because it just completely numbed me from the pain. And so, yeah, so, and then I started, and then I was going out with this friend I made and we were, you know, drinking, I was drinking too excessively at times and, um, and 
The thing with this friendship that I made when I moved out to Victoria was, um, it was really neat. We just met on the bus and I was like going somewhere and then my phone died and this person just happened to be going to the same place and then we got there and it was just like a medical clinic and then we got there and the per we were called up at the same time in line like there was one receptionist and another and they asked our birthday at the exact same time and we had the exact same birthday so it was just really funny and uh so then I don't know I kind of just said that's just funny we're going to the same place and then we have the same birthday so then we ended up just like becoming friends and I really owe this person a lot in some ways of she was very open about her past and her trauma and I hadn't um like I said I was like in denial just going through life struggling in so many ways like so many like every single way you can imagine just struggling going everything's fine everything's fine like could be worse could be worse and so talking with this person allowed me to really finally acknowledge like how screwed up things were and so it's kind of like a it's like I am very thankful for that but on the other hand it's because the um the conversation seemed to like be brought up a lot about it like the past I just noticed that I could just see the pattern how it's like you really just can't get out of it like and it does keep you like depressed and isolated and reliving your trauma and when you're like just talking about it like that's why sometimes they say talk therapy is not helpful for some people with trauma and now I can really see that because it seems like anytime I've had to really like bring up my trauma I need like almost a week off from like talking to people or doing almost anything like it's like very draining so but I'm still making these videos because I just think like I still have so much to say and I'm just hoping that it helps someone somewhere out there young and old anyone who's like suppressing their trauma or um autistic adults who they know that they are but they haven't got diagnosed or um but yeah so so I found that that friendship um was really helpful in some ways and then harmful and sometimes like no offense if this person does see this I'm sorry I'm not trying to hurt your feelings but like it just seemed to be a lot about them it's like sometimes I could almost barely get a word in and and so it's like but and then also the comparison like when it seems like sometimes people kind of compare like they try to make it seem like what they went through was a lot worse like whether it be the poverty level we both were at in life or and even with this person I didn't open up about the full um I didn't open up about like all of it like I kind of just said you know things about my dad gener generally like saying he's like a gambling chain smoking alcoholic abusive and stuff but I never really said like uh, all of it and I just felt like there was this comparison sometimes and and then later on like this person really did just like let me down um at like really my lowest point in my life so that's why I just decided like oh this friendship is over and <clears throat> so
I'm just going through my list so I can try to kind of figure out what what I wanted to say like this I wanted to kind of give a backstory of my life saying the good things like oh I was like living on my own for a long time and you know I was like somewhat self-sufficient in that way even though I did struggle a lot at times financially because of like I wanted to kind of just make it seem like mention the good but then get to the part where it's like I had a real breakdown because I was acting like everything's normal when it really wasn't in every single way and so there's like a little fruit fly <laughs> um but it's kind of impossible to just say it like that but I wish I could have got it expressed that way so that it's kind of like you could see how even looking back and talking about it it's like I'm trying to say everything was so great and I got went out to BC but I was just like really struggling in so many ways and then um so and then at home I started to struggle like I just you know wasn't doing dishes or cleaning or laundry and I was like and I really didn't like my apartment I didn't really get to see it before I moved there and there were like rats in the walls like you could hear them scurrying and um and there was like it was like flea infested but I didn't really know that at the time I thought I was just having like a lot of skin issues but um I was having like really bad skin issues and I think it was caused by that and I had my cats and I just really didn't like spending time in the living room for some reason and at this point in my life I wasn't allowing my cats to look like my bedroom was my one place where I would just go to sleep at night wake up and then I'd be in the rest of the apartment you know when I'm not working or whatever but this was the first time I kind of like really was in my bedroom a lot and I was neglecting my cats like really pains me to say that like not neglecting them in terms of their needs except affection like I was just so down and I I hated spending time in the living room it was something about it was just dingy and dark and I had this couch that I found on the side of the road <laughs> it was really nice but I think it just had like a smell to it <laughs> All these things I just hated being out there but that's where they were and I should have just let them in my bedroom but it was just kind of like a habit that I got into and I wanted to maintain that but um, where things like really really took a turn is because you know like I'm struggling at work and then I have this one friendship and things aren't really that great with that and and then my fibromyalgia is really bad and then I decided I took this little trip to Vancouver and I was gonna go see like my brother and a friend and um uh, not many people know this but um I just like <laughs> I had like a one night stand and I got pregnant actually for like the very first time in my life that I know about I'm like I had had other relations in the past and ha missed periods and stuff but it always came but this time I was actually pregnant and um it was kind of just like so many emotions because I was 28 years old I had been living on my own for 10 years I had always wanted a family did it seem like the right time with the absolute right person no like we hardly knew each other like thankfully when it I did decide like I had always decided early on that I was never gonna have 
an abortion and it's not, I'm not judging anybody else. And I'm sure I could be put in a position where I would have made that choice. But this time it just felt like I'm 28 years old. I've been living on my own for so long. I've always wanted a family. I just don't have it in my heart to have an abortion. And so I just did tell the guy like what had happened. And, um, instead of thankfully, like his reaction was really good. Like he, him and I, even though we didn't hardly know each other, we were like getting to know each other to see if we, there would be anything, but, um, but you know, there were some challenges with that too, because um, I'm not going to say where he was from or anything, but, or his name or any details, but their culture, they very much, well, not, not the whole culture as a whole, but in that culture and his family specifically, like they prefer if the men like date within their own race and everything. So there was a factor.